Michael Graves was an architect and designer. He was a gifted draftsman, a gifted artist, gifted sculptor. You know, he was driven every day to enhance and change the way people live their lives. I mean, he developed a language of design. He wanted to augment the way we view the world, and that was captured in the embodiment of his work. For Michael, I think there was a duality. He was so successful as an architect. But something was, was unfulfilling for Michael. Modernist architecture, it was so elitist. What Michael was, uh, was considering about modernism is how alienating it was. And he felt design should be accessible for everyone. And that wasn't happening in modernist architecture. That all builds this next order of architecture to product design. Target was looking to make an entree onto the East Coast. This is about 1996, 1997. And they came upon this project that the Washington Monument needed restoration. And they thought that would be a really great project to invest in, but then also bring some awareness to who Target was because on the East Coast, no one knew who they were. Well, if we're gonna do a restoration project, there's gonna be scaffolding. Typically, scaffolding doesn't look very good. Who better than Michael Graves to make scaffolding look good? The monument lit in a way that it was never seen before. And that was just magical. So Ron Johnson was a VP of merchandise at Target during our time of developing the Washington Monument. Pulled Michael aside and he said, you know, I've, I've known you for some time. I know what you're doing with the Washington Monument. I'm just sort of curious, like, innovation seems to happen at these smaller groups. Why can't someone like a Target be an originator of design? And, and Michael said, you're right, it would be great to be able to design something wonderful and bring the price down. Ron said, well, why don't you go back to the office and see what you could design for me collection-wise. This is the tea kettle that we did for Target. We really wanted this to be of quality. And knowing again that it wasn't being manufactured in Italy, that made a world of difference in terms of this economy of scale. We were really able to do them of a certain quality. People, just by touching it, they know there's something here. It has substance to it. It's an open cantilevering handle, but it has this beautiful sculpture with quality to it. This is all cast zinc, and it just flows from the soft touch handle. Even just the detail of how that connects, we really left no stone unturned. For the chess set, it was actually part of a larger collection this idea of games. Uh, games seen in a more decorative way. Games that were meant to be left out, to be seen. It's meant to stay out, meant to be used, meant to bring families together. We were thinking of this sort of stay-at-home collection, like what we were thinking of, just like how to bring families together through games. Michael became paralyzed in 2003, and here was this individual who had gone from pursuing figurative architecture so that things were cognitively accessible to target where things became financially accessible. Now overnight he finds himself in this new place where he's paralyzed and the world is physically not accessible. We realized the shortcomings with a lot of the products that he now had to start using in his daily life. You know, in getting back on track, Michael, he challenged us to say, you know, can we make a difference in the patient room? Michael was very involved. It had a lot of personal meaning to him. 
making sure that people with different abilities, different needs, different levels of physical capabilities can use something, a space, an object, or, you know, experience. What great designers do is find those common touch points that large groups of people are experiencing and figure out how to design something that's going to work for all of them. That's what I love about what we get to do. We get to hopefully make people's lives better, whether it's bringing them more joy, whether it's allowing them to do something more easily. Every day was delightful in coming to work. I mean, think about this. Think about what we were doing here. We're playing with colored pencils. We're playing with paper, erasers, crayons. It's art class every day. And then at the end of the result, it's, it, the artfulness transfers into commerce and in developing into something that everyone else can enjoy. To do it really well, you have to be in touch with the people you're designing for. And that's what inclusive design is really embracing. <laughs>